Okay, five part B. Five part B. Find the volume of the funnel. Okay, remember, we always find volumes of anything in this class uh, one slice at a time. So we want to slice this in such a way that the slices have a nice known shape. So these slices are really just a stack, like each slice is just a circle. So that means I'm going to focus on finding the volume of one slice. That means I need to find the area of a slice. Well, the area of a circle is pi multiplied by the radius squared. So if I take pi and I multiply by r squared, that will find the area of the slice. The thickness of the slice is a change in h because h is the height, so that's dh. So this is a formula for calculating the volume of one slice. I want to do that for many slices, so I have to do it for all the different values of h. So there's my formula for calculating the volume of the entire funnel. I believe if you have this, they will give you the first point. Um, I went ahead and wrote in the formula for r, being careful to make sure that I square. Uh, let's be careful there. Hold on a minute. Uh, that's something looks wrong because it's supposed to be this all squared. So that's a typo in their work. This square needs to be here because it's the entire radius being squared. That's one point. To square something means to multiply it by itself. So that means you have 1 over 20 times 1 over 20 times this times this again. So that's why they were able to take out the 1 over 20 times 1 over 20 here. The pi was a constant. That was able to come out of the integral as well. The pi wasn't being squared. That leaves this being squared. So now I've got to find this antiderivative. Well, I can't use the expanded rule because of that square right there. So my best option is to expand this out, take 3 plus h squared multiplied by 3 plus h squared. That gives me 9 plus 2h squared plus h to the fourth. Now I can find the antiderivative of each of these individually because they're terms that are being added. Uh, here, to make the writing easier, I changed this to pi over 400. You wouldn't actually have to do that. So now the antiderivative becomes, here's my constant, pi over 400. The antiderivative of 9 will be, because that's a dh, 9h. 2h squared becomes 2h cubed over 3. h to the fourth becomes h to the fifth over 5. And then we must evaluate that between 0 and 10. So this is that idea again that if I can't pick up a calculator and integrate, what I do instead is I find the antiderivative and I evaluate. That's the fundamental theorem. So that's one more point, total of two points so far. All that's left to do is plug in the 10 and the 0. Once again, plugging in 0 would have resulted in 0, so I didn't have to write that down. I just show plugging in the 10, and I will get the third point. I don't do any simplification. Don't spend time doing that. Just stop. Three total points for number 5, part B.